My name is Ian Tigliese and I'm a chemical engineer at Alcoa Pinjarra Refinery. So a chemical engineer at Pinjarra Refinery can do one of two things, so they have two major roles. You're either an area chemical engineer where you help on a day-to-day -day sort of a basis to troubleshoot and just ensure that all the set points in your particular area are being reached. My first task before starting work is to gather my safety equipment and make sure that I'm wearing all the right protective gear. Work starts with me putting all this on, walking to the front gate, swiping in and then making my way to my office. In the morning I'll come in um, first thing I'll do is just have a look just on this sort of a screen on how the production um, has gone in the last 24 hours and how our key performance indicators have gone on a refinery level. I'll then have a look at other screens on um, how we've run in certain areas for precipitation, which is the area which I look after. Take certain notes down that I'll raise at the morning meeting when I go down there at quarter to eight. One of the roles of the area chem eng is to give day-to-day -day technical support. So you've got your control attendants that sit on the board and myself as an area chem eng overlooks that. So if there's any other problems that Cooch has during the day, he'll then feed back to me and then I'll go try and assist him in troubleshooting it and making sure that we do get um, our area, so we're just a small area of the refinery, um, running at 100% maximum capacity. All right, what's going on? <laughs> how, are we, uh, how are we looking this morning? I became a chemical engineer approximately two and a half years ago. I was in year 10 at school, was unsure of what I wanted to do as a career. Um, went to a few career fairs and spoke to my parents and they sort of were pretty supportive of me and said, uh, do what you enjoy and do what, what makes you happy. So I was pretty good at maths and science. Got to the end of year 12, put preferences in at university and um, chose to become a chemical engineer and studied four years at RMIT um, in Melbourne. And at the end of that, I started here in 2012. So now I'll just um, check up on the project that I'm just currently running. It's um, upgrading the flocculant that we currently use for our trays, so it's a new technology. So you can actually use less of this flock um, than the old flocculant. Um, to give better tray overflow clarities, which if you improve those tray overflow clarities, you increase production. And that's one of the major roles of the chemical engineer at Alcoa, is to continuously improve and make sure that we grow year by year by year in our tonnage production and therefore making more profit. Hi, my name is Eugenia. Uh, this is Clarification Air. So we are responsible here for two main processes. One is to remove the mud from the liquor and the other is to remove the oxalate from the liquor. I'm Brazilian, so I started my career back in Brazil seven and a half years ago. My, uh, my whole family is uh, of engineers, so it was a very easy choice. But also, since I, um, when I was young, I used to like to um, play with experiments and fix anything around me and that gave me um, uh, a bit of a sense of how challenging some things can be and, and then learn a little bit more of that uh, and the sciences that are behind that. I've always been passionate about maths and chemistry and physics and yeah, it's part of my family but I love it too. Um, analytical mind for sure is a mandatory thing. Uh, also uh, being able to troubleshoot, have curiosity. You have to be able to dig into any problem without knowing the solution, have the right decision making, take decisions with few information, know about safety and help with that. Eugene, you're spot on. You need to have that analytical mind and be able to solve problems. I also think to be a very good engineer, you have to be able to communicate with everyone. So not just communicate with your peers, but communicate mm -hmm. with the people on the shop floor, electricians. So when you do have a problem, they come to you and tell you something and you have to be able to understand the complexity or the full scope of the problem. And then you need to be able to also, when you go away and solve that problem, you have to be able to communicate back to them. So you have to have that really good working relationship with, in particular, the operators, because in the end, they're the ones that are going to do what you've asked them to do. 
as engineers, we train to uh, find solutions for things that are not there. And yeah, it's just very awesome. Authorised by the Government of Western Australia, Perth. Spoken by I. Tiglis and E. Fagan.